stop scrolling. We're about to jump into our Saturday Devo. Let's go, we're starting with a quick story. Use your imagination, here we go. Picture two knights sitting on these massive white horses. We could even say that they're sparkling white horses. And they're facing this gleaming castle. It's kind of like Mickey Mouse's castle, but way more intimidating. And it's surrounded, surrounded by this huge stone wall, which in turn are circled by a moat, you know, water cutting through alligators in the moat. And then there's archers at the top of the castle with, with their, they're ready with their battlements, awaiting the signal to launch their deadly arrows at the two knights below. So now we have these two knights, right? And the first knight, his body is encased in a massive iron suit. His arms, his legs, diesel. They're enclosed by hinged pieces of metal. His armor is completed by heavy boots and rigid gloves. Woo! Homie is glistening. Then we have the second knight. And he's sitting on his, on his horse, you know. But the only metal that he's wearing are the braces that are on his teeth and a backward baseball hat and sunglasses protect his head from the glare of the sun. And you know, his shirt, homie's wearing a tank top, right? <laughs> He's wearing shorts, socks, Reebok shoes that complete his entire outfit. And the, the first night, he looks at the second one who's in the tank top and he says, yo, shall we charge upon the castle on my signal and bring honor to our families this fair day? He raises his sword and he holds his right hand and points in the direction of the castle. And then the second night, he's like, okay, dude, whatever you, whatever you wanna do as he lifts his baseball hat. All of this story makes me have to ask you a question. Which night would you rather be? The first night, he's, he's rather confined, right? And of course, he gets stuffy and sweaty inside of that suit. But then you have the second night who, he's totally free of any restriction inside of his dress code. You know, he's got it made, right? No, actually wrong. The first night, with the suit, he might feel restricted by his armor, but he wears it for his own good. And the second night, he might feel more comfortable, more free, but he's unprotected. And you know, the same goes for God's word. See, God's commands work like a suit of armor. They're designed to protect us from the fiery arrows that are aimed at us by Satan. That's in Ephesians chapter 6, 16. His command not to steal, for example, it protects us from the guilt and fear of punishment and shame, embarrassment that real punishment would cause if you got caught from stealing. His command not to lie, it protects you from being trapped inside of your own web of lies that you would spin from just having to invent new ones just to cover up the old ones. It also keeps you from losing the trust of your family and friends. His command to forgive those who have hurt you protects you from becoming bitter and a resentful person. See, God's commands are not designed to cramp your style or to spoil your fun. Instead, they're intended to be like a suit of armor to protect you from harm. And that's our verse for the day. It's found right here. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, and it reads like this. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. And that's where we find ourselves today. You have an opportunity to put on the armor of God. You have two choices. You could be the, the, like the knight that's fully stacked in his armor or you could be like the second knight that showed up in a tank top, some sneakers and some shorts and you can trust and believe that he probably lost the battle as he charged towards the castle. You have the choice today. What will you do? Let's pray. Father, we come before you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you give us instructions on how to properly wear your armor. Lord, you break it down for us so clearly in your word. Right there in Ephesians, you go on to break it down. And Lord, I pray that we would make the decision today that we would wear your armor. Lord, that we would be like the first knight who is ready, who is protected just in case at all times, standing firm, standing guard, so that we would be ready to do what you've called us to do in your eyes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.